my name is Si and I'm a year 2 English Literature major at the National University of Singapore. So today I'll be talking about the second generation English poet Hing Siuk Tian. Hing was born in 1963 and published her first collection, Crossing the Chopsticks, in the year 1993. So I've actually decided to discuss Hing's first published collection. I think it is particularly meaningful because it marks the start of Hing's career as a published poet and many of the concerns that she brings up in this particular collection are actually still prominent across a lot of later works. So Hing displays a lot of acute self-awareness and self-reflexivity in discussing these topics and brings her personal voice to it which I think is very interesting. So she takes topics which might appear very general, very public and very universal and adds her own personal touch to them. I think a lot of people actually enjoy foraying into the intimate space that she has created and has invited her readers into. And this is why I think it is quite a pity that this collection is no longer in print actually. So here I would like to thank Hing for actually lending me her personal copy of the book for this project and also give it a shout out if you would like to view the book in person, you can actually go to the Lee Kong Chien Reference Library in the National Library Building at Bugis. So the first poem that I've decided to study is actually Top 6. And this, of course, is the poem that gave the entire collection its name. So I was quite interested to see how it could be a holistic representation of Hing's many, many concerns. And sure enough, this poem actually shows Hing's very huge concern about the state of progress that Singapore was going through. So there's something that she talks about in the poem that I think would jump out at everybody. That's the idea of Western convenience and a fork and spoon, and yet cultural respectability in a pair of chopsticks. So the Western habits here are denounced as the unbecoming and unrespectable other. Yet if you think about it, crossing the chopsticks itself, crossing chopsticks, a lot of our elders would tell us, hey, that's not very nice, this is a bad practice of tradition, it's actually taboo to cross our chopsticks. So there's always the looming question of how we can actually preserve our culture in a time and space of constant change. The second poem that I've chosen to discuss is actually quite different from the first poem. Words on a turntable is very explicitly self-referential and much more concerned about the process of poetic creation rather than it is culturally concerned. So this is another one of the big things that Hing is very concerned about. She's concerned about the very process of her words and her work coming to be. And the first thing that I notice as somebody who's studies literature is the use of verbs. So you can see that verbs can paint an emotional landscape and the violent verbs act as a way into the struggling psyche of the frustrated poet. And this is accompanied by the assonance and the t t t sound. Quite in your face, quite violent, quite angry. And this is how we see the poetic process moving. We see first the struggle, the scrabbling for the words, and the anger, the desperation, and eventually the defeatedness, the nothingness. And I think what Hing is trying to say here is that the poetic process is very much a psychological rather than intellectual process. Sometimes the words come to you and you embrace them, sometimes the words just don't come and you can't really do anything about that either. So one fun little thing that I'd like to ask all of you about is, do you think it is ironic? Do you think it is ironic that this particular poem is a poem about the difficulty of the very act of writing poetry itself. I think that's a quite fun part of this poem. And with that, I've actually come to the last poem of today. And it is none other than Naming of the Parts of the CBD in 1992 Shantone Way. And that's a very specific title and sure enough, this poem is very specific. It's far more directional than any of the other poems that we've discussed so far in this sharing. And I think it's a very fun poem, it's very interesting. You get to see Hing's concerns in a more universal light. So she names specific developments that are happening in 1992, such as the restricted zone, buildings which were completed in 1992 or around there in the central business district. So I'd like to leave this poem a little bit more open-ended. Look at it on your own, have fun with it, take note of the rhythm, take note of the alliteration, read it out loud. What does the use of etc mean? Does it mean that the CBD is going to take over the entire Singapore? Is that a good thing? 
Are we paying enough attention to the business of verse? Should we commodify art? Hing asks a lot of these big questions and I think the main reason for this is because the reader ought to develop their own feelings so don't be scared to go in there to interact with the poem and have fun. I put in a few stanzas here and I would love for you to just be yourself with them. That's how reading poetry is always a refreshing, it's always an honest and a personal experience. And cut! That's the end of my presentation today. I hope you have learned a little bit more about Hing Siuk Tian and you'll continue reading her poems or you will start reading her poems. She's quite an understudied second generation poet in Singapore in my opinion and her poems are actually very accessible so I encourage you all to go out there and play with it. I definitely had a great time reading her collection and a lot of them are still available in bookstores and if I'm not wrong, there's a new one coming out. So head on right down to the library, to the bookstore, to wherever. Just get a copy and start reading. You won't regret it. Thank you for being here with me today and bye!